So the other topic is that Neuralink apparently had its, it might, it might have been their first patient where they're, the guy is, uh, I believe, paraplegic or paralyzed, um, can't use his limbs. Um, and he had Neuralink implanted and he was able to play Mario Kart with his dad, apparently, through Neuralink. So essentially, he's controlling the cart and everything just with his eyes, I believe, and with his mind. So that's <clears throat> very cool. You know, I saw videos previously of monkeys playing Pong, <clears throat> Pong with uh, brain technology interfaces, or what are they called? What's the acronym for some <laughs> something TI or something like that? Um, brain technology interfaces or something like that. But they were playing Pong with a similar um, technology. You know, these monkeys were Neuralink. Neuralink. It was Neuralink. Yeah. yeah. So Neuralink, yeah. they were able to control the bar going up or down to play Pong with their eyes. They were doing this in monkeys. And now apparently they've done it in a patient who was able to play Mario Kart. So it's pretty awesome technology, guys. <laughs> yeah, so that that was a really cool story. That guy is 29. Um, I forget exactly how he got hurt, but I think he was, I, if I'm not mistaken, he was, um, I think he was involved, involved in like extreme sports or something. And he was a full quadriplegic. So he had no no movement from, I think, like the shoulders down. Um, and it's really interesting how the technology works. So I, I watched a, a short video on it. By the way, if you haven't seen this video, there's a, a video of a Neuralink engineer talking with this guy um about how it works and kind of how he's able to control by the way he was he's he's played chess he's played um civ civilization uh, which is apparently a very popular like pc game um yeah and then of course mario kart which is really cool but alex the way he plays that's really interesting how do you think he controls like the let's say chess how do you think he controls all of this uh i i wasn't i'm not 100 percent sure but i thought it was just through using his eyes and his mind to like i, I think there's like a click there's some type of click that he's able to do with something. Okay, so I, I, there, there very likely are some like tricks he's had to learn how to like, you know, click or drag or, you know, do yeah. you know, different cursor moves. But the way Neuralink works, I find, I find this so cool. Um, the way it works uh, for allowing you to control things is actually the same uh, mechanism that your brain uses to tell your arm to move. So the reason, so for instance, this guy, I think his name is like Andrew, Andrew Russelli or something. I, I'm probably butchering his name. I find can, his name for me. I'll, yeah, I'll find it. But I'll basically describe this. So um, he's playing chess, right? He wants to move a piece. He basically like pretends like he's going to actually pick up the piece and drag it and move it. And that's how the Neuralink knows like what to do. It like, somehow takes those signals from the brain. Um, and then it communicates that to the computer and, and moves the chess piece or, you know, uh, moves it, steers the Mario Kart or something like that. Um, and the same thing was true with the monkeys. So the monkeys, which was really cool, they were given the Pong joysticks to move the, the Pong like board up and down. And um, basically the, the joysticks were unplugged. They weren't plugged into anything and the monkeys were moving the joystick up and that would, you know, move the, the little Pong bar up and down um, when, you know, however they move the joystick, which is really cool. So it basically it's using the same signal that you use to tell your arm to do the movement, um, but it's using that, uh, those same those same outputs from your brain and it's just taking them putting them into the neural link and then the neural link is just telling the computer to do it so it's kind of it's kind of cool like you know if you think about it from the you know mario kart perspective imagine you're holding a controller right maybe it's a wii remote whatever you nintendo switch however you play mario kart um and the same brain signals that tell your hands which buttons to move um you you do that exact same thing with your brain except in your with your neural link instead of like moving your thumbs and fingers if you're a quadriplegic it's just going to tell the the you know the gaming console the you know the correct uh, sequence of you know uh button clicks presses joystick uh clicks and things like that um, so to drive the mario kart and things like that so it's, it's basically like it's taking the same like outputs from your brain but instead of going through your hands and then into a controller it's going through a neural link um, and then directly to the gaming console or the computer. Yeah, cool. and to clarify some of my earlier points, it's uh, BCI or Brain Computer Interface is the abbreviation for the technology that Neuralink is. One of the companies actually, not the only company that's uh, exploring these this field. Uh, so it's BCI and the guy's name was Noland Ar Arbaugh. And oh. um, yeah, and then also in this article that I'm reading, the 
Ecole Polytechnique Federal uh, in Lausanne, Switzerland, has successfully enabled Gert Jan Oskam, who is paralyzed, to walk just by thinking about the movements involved. So this other um, institution was able to apparently help this paralyzed man walk just by thinking about it, thanks to these electronic brain implants. So I think that's going to be extremely interesting when it comes to prostheses. So yeah, people who don't lose an arm or they're paralyzed or things like that actually get, get regaining function of their limbs and things like that and their ability to move around. So I think BCI is going to be instrumental in that as well, just from this uh, article that I just kind of came across here. I think this is super interesting. And it does make me think that, like, you know, our, our brains are pretty unique in that um, they're extremely, pla well, I don't know if this is unique for, for other, you know, uh, across all species of animals and things, but they're extremely plastic, right? So if 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 your mode of movement is like thinking about how to walk and that becomes very normal for you, when you go to sleep or, you know, your brain is like sort of downloading those programs and like retracing those um, neural pathways and really ingraining them. And then it like will feel natural to you. Like walking is not something you have to concentrate on heavily. It's literally just like, you know, you're just walking. You think about walking, and for you, walking feels a certain way, and your brain adjusts, um, which is pretty cool. So, um, yeah, I think I think this will be really interesting. I do wonder how things will like evolve, though, with like drift. Like I think about you know if I'm doing something with like very fine motor skill requirements, like gaming, right? If I'm you know moving lots of my digits and pressing buttons and clicking a you know. Uh, this button harder than I click this button and I'm you know moving this joystick around but I can also click the joystick in I find that that'll be interesting right because like your your sort of precision in your mind has to be very very like tuned in to the you know correct like button clicks and things um mm -hmm. and I wonder how like you know you could get some drift in in your yeah like I don't know drift in the output there right like imagine like what you know today driving the Mario Kart feels a certain way, but, you know, maybe tomorrow I, you know, I'm more advanced at it. And then, I don't know, it just seems very foggy to me because I don't, I don't quite understand like sort of how discrete the different impulses from a brain are when they go into a neural link or something like that. So yeah, I don't know. It'll be really interesting to see how it all plays out, but um, yeah, it'd be pretty yeah. cool. And uh, just a little bit more background about this, you know, apparently I think this operation on this guy, on the, the guy jerk, Gert Jan Oscom. Um, I think it started in like 2021. So this stuff has been around and being explored for many years. Um, and also apparently back in 2018, David MZ became the first patient to be successfully treated with a spinal implant so much so that he was able to have a baby with his wife, something that had not been possible previously. So this stuff's been in, being explored for a while and Neuralink is just one of the institutions that's kind of a uh, pushing forward in it so uh, obviously they have a good ability to get attention you know through elon's uh all of his stuff just gets a lot of uh, attention on it but there are other institutions all doing this and you know kind of uh, human computer uh implants and interfaces have been being explored for a while and they'll continue to hopefully get better and potentially enter the market so very interesting yeah yeah really exciting